Back in the 1980s, I went down to see Auntie Con to ask her if she can come and show the women in the community how to make these baskets. Her very first response was, no, the white man will come and take your children away. I'm working with the traditional tools here, the leg bone of a kangaroo that are sharpened at one end and a shoulder blade that I use for flattening the grass. My great-great-grandmother was a basket weaver. She's weaving with the toes here. Yeah, so Jenny taught her her daughter-in-laws, right down to my grandmother who was born and raised on the mission. Nan was taught how to make baskets to raise revenue for the mission, but she wasn't allowed to teach her daughter, Adi Connie Hart. You weren't allowed to pass on your traditional crafts, your traditional art, your customary law. You weren't allowed to speak your language. So from 1866 onwards, we started to lose a lot of our culture. So, Aunty Connie Hart, she used to tell us when she was little about her being naughty and peeking around corners and watching the women make the baskets. If they left them and went inside for a cup of tea, She'd sneak over and do a stitch or two, just copying the work that the women had did, and then follow the women out to where they got the grass from. Yeah, so whenever we were naughty as kids, she'd come up and give us a hug and say, don't worry, I was naughty too. And she'd tell us this story. Go down through the centre of your basket that you're making, and you pull it through, and there's your buttonhole stitch. And you I had a cunning heart. Finally realised that our children weren't going to be taken away. She didn't have police to knock on her door. So the blinds went up, the doors became unlocked, and she went out there and taught. And that's the best but from the time that my daughter was six or seven, she sat at Auntie Con's knee and watched her weave all the time. Straight home from school, changing to clothes, and then straight up to Auntie Con's. My daughter has, together with me, have taught quite a lot of young people in this community. Not just Gunditjmara people, but anyone who wanted to learn. We're not only just passing on that traditional knowledge of basket weaving, we're also having a two-way understanding of different worlds, I guess. I mean, if Anikon hadn't have taught us, this way of life would have disappeared. The more we share, the better it is for all generations. So thank goodness for Anikon being a little bit naughty. <laughs> Yeah. And the running water would come that swift that the other fish couldn't come out. That would be a real good feed from that basket.